Hey guys, a few months ago I was in Washington DC visiting Electricity Bikes for reviews and a local news station reached out. They wanted to interview me for like an Earth Day story. I don't think they made the deadline, but they ended up giving me all this extra footage and I thought it was kind of cool because we talk about the history of the site, how to choose an e-bike and stuff. So this is kind of the uncut uh, edit and I hope you enjoy it. Ready? Go, go. My name is Court. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and I run a website reviewing electric bikes. So what is it about e-bikes? Well, electric bikes have allowed me to continue riding and commuting and climbing mountains and stuff after I got a, some knee injuries when I was a little bit younger, and I love riding, so. And what are we looking at right here? Well, this is a Reese & Mueller electric bike. Uh, pretty fantastic, because it's got this cargo bay up front, and you can put your kids in it. And believe it or not, it's a full suspension, so you don't have to sacrifice comfort. You get a ton of utility, and it's using one of the best drive systems on the market. This is Bosch Performance Line right down here with two batteries. So, you know, with extra weight, uh, you burn through the batteries a little bit quicker, and they've got a solution here so you can make it all the way there and back again. Cool. Uh, how, now, how did you get into reviewing e-bikes? Oh, great question. I was living in Austin, Texas, working at a tech firm downtown. And you know, there's so much traffic. It's kind of crazy. It was like 20 bucks a day just to park. So I decided uh, I'd ride my bike every day. But with my sensitive knees, it started to add up, take a toll on me towards the end of the week. I went online and I was trying desperately to figure out a solution. I didn't want to have to ride a motorcycle in traffic. You know, it just doesn't smell very good. It's a little more dangerous. I love riding a bike. I thought maybe there's an in-between solution and sure enough, the internet, I found uh, electric bikes. This was in 2012, and they were predominantly in Europe um, and Asia at the time. So I ordered one sight unseen from a website. It arrived, I just unboxed it and fell in love. And, and that's, that's the beginning of reviewing these things. For the past like six and a half years, I've traveled all over the place trying to kind of touch and, and ride and share um, all the electric bikes that I, I possibly can. Thanks, man. What kind of tech stuff did you do in Austin? I was working for a company called Retail Me Not. Uh, it's like an online coupon kind of thing. And I'd worked at Hewlett Packard, Google, and Accenture before that. So I had like a technology background. And I was able to use some of that to make the website and then just kind of be myself with a camera to do the rest. <laughs> And what did you study in school? Was like a double E or? Oh, um, you know, I studied business, marketing, some entrepreneurship, and uh, project management uh, when in undergrad at CU Boulder. And then a little bit more in, out on the West Coast at Stanford, I did some um, continuing studies in film and uh, programming websites. So it was, it was kind of a mix of programming. I'm a mostly self-taught from um, big shout out to Hewlett Packard. They, they hired me as an intern when I was in high school. So I learned how to do websites and just kept on learning all the way. Nice, man. I mean, forgive me for saying this, but you seem like a super freaking smart guy. Thanks. I, I try to wear a helmet all the time. That's the key. <laughs> but some, you know, like, uh, you know, you got the, the geniuses and the menses, and I, I think you're living up around here somewhere. Oh, I appreciate it. You know, it's when I was working at these big corporations, it was really satisfying to build relationships with people, but the products were a little bit less inspiring in some ways. Nothing wrong with like printers or online coupons, but bicycles connect people to each other, and I, I really think that's special. Um, I also feel like there's an environmental sustainability piece, and then, and then fitness and health. Um, and as a, I'm a spiritual person, so being outside and feeling like I'm engaging and connecting in a way that uh, is authentic and is true to my purpose, that really, it brings it all home. So I feel like it's more purposeful lifestyle. Awesome, man. You know, even if you don't want to ride, you know, when you're riding and you get the wind in your hair and the sun's shining, and even if you're, for me, even when I'm grumpy and stuff, yeah, I just, I get real comfortable real fast. Absolutely. It's so fun. You know, they, some of these companies, you know, it's marketing, but it's like, put a smile on your face, but you really do, <laughs> you start to ride. And all the worries sort of disappear. It's, you know, it's not like rush hour traffic. In fact, it seems to make me a little more friendly. And I'm never nervous about like having, having a quick stop if I see something or someone who's interesting because parking is not a problem. You just pull over and you like leave your bike. Um, and so to me, it's like really living, you know, it's, 
there's a difference between this. And regular bikes are great, too. Like, I'm, I'm nothing against acoustic or sweaty bikes. Um, I just happen to have these knee sensitivities. And um, there are times when I was living in Austin, Texas, where it would be hot. You know, it's the summer, and you're riding your bike, and then you get to work, and you're kind of like, you know, might need a shower. With an electric bike, you can rely on it to, to get there and be very consistent. You don't ever have to miss a day even if it rains, you know, a lot of these have fenders and stuff, and you'll make it. It's more like a vehicle. What happened to your knees, by the way? Well, growing up in Colorado, I would go skiing a lot and snowboarding and wakeboarding, and I love surfing, so I would even, like, I, I got to do that once as a kid, and I just would throw myself off stairs and down, you know, I, it, was, it was abuse. <laughs> I really enjoyed these things, and now that I feel... You know, they, they are just sensitive. I, I walk downstairs backwards almost 100% of the time. Yeah, because walking forward, and when I hike, I hike with poles. So I'm, I'm 35, and yeah, I'm, I'm like pretty good shape and stuff like that, but my knees are kind of messed up, and I haven't had surgery, and I would kind of prefer not to. So for me, this is a preventative measure. Um, and I just think, why not? Like, I, I know people who are like really high level athletes and um, I think even they love e-bikes too because it's like you can go, there's something nice about a lightweight bicycle but an electric bike lets you do trail maintenance and stuff like get to the spot and carry a shovel no problem or go a little bit further. The, the ride down is still very similar. So the ride up, that's always the part that kind of seems like a chore. It's not like you're not getting exercise, you're still pedaling. These are really, you know, fancy, very high-end electric bikes here at Electricity Bikes in DC. They carry kind of top-end stuff. When the big companies like Giant, Specialized, and Trek, those are the big three in the United States, now that they're selling bikes, I mean, it's, it's a thing. Like, it's a really, it's legitimate. You are pedaling, you're getting a cardio workout. You're just going a little further. You're able to go to places that maybe you, you couldn't before. And, um, and maybe before you could only ride a few days a week. That was my experience. And now I can ride every day. You know, and not everybody is set up to do this. Uh, what do you mean? But I, I don't know that there's like a kick butt uh, <laughs> e, e bike store in every city in the country. Oh, oh, this, like all of this. Yeah, yeah, no, there's really not. There's, there are a few places in the United States, like Propel Bikes has a, a shop in um, New York City in Brooklyn, and now they have one in Long Beach. And then we've got the New Wheel, and they're out in San Francisco, and then across the bay in like Marin. And then, you know, Electricity Bikes is another one of those really big places that has this wide selection. Because there's something to be said for, like, hopping on this. This is a high involvement, like, high-touch experience. Bikes are pretty sophisticated when you start to add in all the accessories. And then you combine electronics. And, and a lot of the people who buy these, I, I, in my experience, it's kind of a mix. Sometimes it's like an older demographic that's like, we used to ride bikes and we'd like to ride together, but we're... Maybe it's tough to keep up together, or one person enjoys it more than the other. So how do we level the playing field? Um, well, e-bikes allow you to do that. But when was the last time you bought a bike? You know, plus a computer now? I mean, it's like a lot to deal with. So being able to come into a shop like this is such a, it's a big deal. And uh, that's why I travel all over the world. Like this last year, I was in the United Kingdom, Mexico twice, Canada a bunch, and then like all the states, you know? so that I could see the bikes myself. So I can touch them and give you an idea and you can kind of learn and then go in and get, you know, pull the trigger, I guess, if you find one that fits your lifestyle and your budget. Nice. Do you seem like uh, you're kind of the guy? Well, uh, big shout out to Electric Bike Report. Uh, it's my friend Pete. That's actually the first website I found when I wanted an e-bike. Because remember, there, I, there weren't any, like in shops. I had to buy online and the experience was you know, there was room for improvement there. I, it was not what I expected. It was heavier, and it was, this was 2012, right? So I kind of had buyer's remorse, but in the other direction, it wasn't like, oh, I spent all this money. It was like, I wish I'd spent more because the bike just didn't really live up to, like, what I felt it could be in my heart, you know? I'm, I'm a fun, sporty guy, and this bike just felt heavy, and they've gotten so much better now. So anyway, Electric Bike Report was, like, a newsy kind of a website, and then I've really tried to create a platform where you can see all the specs and they're all listed the same way from manufacturer to manufacturer and you can compare the bikes back to back and there's even a forum and comments and stuff so people engage. The forum actually gets more traffic than the website now. So that's the community and I've just done my best to limit advertisements and make this into a safe, 
objective, honest space. That's, that's my goal. Oh, yeah, yeah. We try to be super thorough going through all the specs and everything like that. And I say we because I actually I work directly with the manufacturers now. Uh, when I first started, I would go on Craigslist and I would like contact people who are selling their bikes and be like, can I pay you like 10 bucks to look at your bike, please? You know, now I get a service fee from the manufacturers because there are more bikes than I can cover and I have to pay for travel and some of these other expenses. So we're, it's kind of a team. They give me all the input. I'm a third party. I study it myself. I weigh the bikes separately too, just to confirm things like that. And then I go out ideally with like a shop owner like Charlie from Electricity Bikes or sometimes it's just a friend, and then we, we talk about the bike, we have a conversation and, and you know, review it. And when you were riding, I was like, man, this guy digs this, popping wheelies, <laughs> yeah. up and down the stairs. Yeah. You look like you really enjoy what you're doing. I do, yeah. You know, it's, it's a real blessing to get to spend time outside each day, like on a bicycle. And, you know, it's funny because I feel like it's consistent with when I was commuting to work. I would ride my bike to work and I would ride my bike home. And I love that part of the day. That was my favorite part of the day. So now I get a little bit of that. Like I'm filming, you know, and I'm, but I'm with a friend. I'm outside and, and I just love it. And, you know, it's, yeah, I feel blessed. You know, I try to ride to work every day I work at yeah. the station. And I think people think I'm a little bit weird. I don't care. <laughs> well, they're right. But, no, I think you're, it's sometimes when normal isn't healthy, normal isn't good. Um, so I think it's neat to see the growth in this category and just more people looking at bikes. You know, I, I have a car too, you know, I got to get around and stuff like this is, it's very complimentary for different moments in my life. Uh, this can be efficient. You can actually save money by getting a, a, an electric bike because you don't have to have automobile insurance, um, those kinds of things. It's, it's pretty affordable once you get past like the initial price tag of the bike. Charging a bike is like 10 cents and it'll take you 50 miles depending on the bike that you get. So when you think about that and the wear and tear on a vehicle and changing the oil and all that, unless you have an electric car, e-bikes are very competitive. In fact, um, I've read that it, you know, in terms of riding a bike, a pedal bike, acoustic bike, uh, it's less efficient than electric bikes because the way that we get our food, usually it's trucked in and depending on your diet and then digesting that and turning it in from you know, uh, chemical into uh, like heat, mechanical energy, and then propelling a bike is less efficient than charging off of the grid, which may come from coal, but over time we're seeing a greening of the grid with more solar and wind power. Even if it's just coal, that's still more efficient than shipping that gasoline, pumping it into your car, burning the car, the car's getting less efficient over time. So I've done a lot of research. This is one of the most efficient ways to move a person in the world. First walk in, I was like, does it charge when you're pedaling? I mean, you, how long does it plug it in? What's kind of the, the you know, the succinct e-bikes for dummies thing you tell people? Yeah, like me. sure, sure. Um, well, there's a range of electric bikes, and there are three classes in the United States. So class one is the most allowable, like included on mountain biking trails and stuff. You have to pedal. It only goes up to 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour. If you're in Europe, they, they limit it to 15.5. So it's a slightly different because it's more congested with biking there. Um, class two means you could have a little throttle, which could be kind of useful if you need a little boost, but usually the mid-drive bikes that are more efficient, sophisticated, they don't have the throttle because it's European technology. Class three is for us commuters that want to go a little faster, you can go up to 28 miles per hour, and that's, that's a lot of fun, but you're going to burn through the battery a little bit quicker, so there's always a trade-off. So an e-bike overview for beginners, it's really just more and more, it's, it's like a bicycle with a little bit of assist and it empowers you. It's, it's almost like a bionic man experience where you, know, you put in this much energy and you get that much out because the motor is assisting you. And in some cases, like these fancy bikes, they're measuring your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, pedal torque, like a thousand times per second. So it's very dynamic. It's not like, well, I didn't mean to start, oh, stop. No, it's very smooth and efficient that way. So yeah, I feel like, um, you know, that's the big takeaway. It's slightly heavier than a regular bike. It is more expensive, uh, but it just really empowers you and it, it takes you and it multiplies that. What's that like? Oh yeah, I grew up riding bikes and I really enjoyed that time with my family. 
Um, we would ride to church sometimes and just, you know, such a beautiful day. It's a Sunday. People are just relaxing and you've got the family together. My parents had a tandem and I had like a little car seat on the back and my sister was up on the front, like the little car seat. We have a picture of the family together and it's just, yeah, really, um, I've, it's been part of my life. Uh, and riding my bike to school, to me, that was like freedom, right? I'm a young man, right? So there's like adventure and ex exploration and stuff. And uh, a bike really empowered me to do that. I could hop on and I had like limits at first. I could go around the block and then I could go two blocks and then pretty soon I could ride to school, which is a couple miles away. And that gave me that freedom and the opportunity to make friends and to enjoy more of nature. I remember riding along like the river creek path and just looking out at the river and, um, you know, seeing the different animals, seeing the different seasons. In Colorado, you know, there's different seasons. I would ride it on the ice sometimes, like on the, on the river when it froze. That was cool, kind of an adventure right there. So yeah, I feel, I've had bikes in my life forever. But yeah, I ride bikes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, sort of disambiguated English. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's a, a deeper meaning to me that. And then subsequently, I had lung failure, mm -hmm. and I've got, you know, got health problems from all that. And so on my gratitude thing on the way to work, you know, when I'm cranky, I remind myself, you know, thank you that I have lungs, that I can breathe, I can ride this bike. Because not yeah. everybody gets to do that. But yeah. I think, like, I think for a lot of us, there's a real, like you said, spiritual, meaningful component with these bicycles. What is that, what is that, that story for you? Yeah. There's a real connection. And you'll see this with people on their bikes where they, they get, like, a special color. Or they get grip tape and they get the wheels and stuff. And... Um, growing up, I had a bike. It was a Scott. It was blue. It had a yellow suspension fork. Right when suspension first came out, it was like a rock shocks. You know, it was just so much fun. And it would take me to these places, and I still have memories of those places and the connection, you know, with, with the earth and with God. You know, it was, it's really a way to kind of get out there and, and have some time and some peace and recharge. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, yeah, now at some of those trails, it might be a struggle <laughs> now without a little bit of assistance. Uh, but I, for me, the other component of this is like the utilitarian transportation aspect, because let's face it, I mean, I'm busy, I got work. That's my fun time is like getting to work. If I'm in a car, I'm listening to a podcast, but if I'm on a bike, I'm actually experiencing reality, which is nice. And of course, there, there is a risk associated with that. And you see those like ghost bikes occasionally on the side of the road where they paint it white and it reminds us that someone died there, someone lost their life. But I think of it like I know that I'm definitely slowly killing people by driving an automobile, the pollution that it causes, and the international conflicts, and there, there is death associated with this guaranteed. With a bicycle or an electric bike, it's not necessarily guaranteed. There's something of a risk that I could get in a car accident, I could get in a bike accident, and it's nice to have um, the safety, you know, you got a helmet or whatever, but... I'm sorry. Far away. Yeah. So with an automobile you know, there's guaranteed pollution happening and, and there might be international conflict associated with retrieving the energy sources, gasoline or, or diesel. Um, with a bicycle or electric bike, I, I, you reduce that, you know, and you're, you're guaranteed a healthier local environment. Um, and and that, that appeals to me, but there is that trade-off in safety a little bit. And I just want to acknowledge that. Yeah, I always wear a helmet and I ride safely and I bike lanes and stuff. Um, but I think that one thing about electric bikes in particular that raises that safety component is a lot of them now have lights built in. They're like integrated and they run right off that main battery pack. A lot of them now have reflective tires and stuff like that. So when you're looking at spending money and you're thinking about how you're using your body and your environment, these companies are, they're really looking at this more from a transportation angle and, and how can they keep people safe, even puncture protection tires, things like that. There's, a, there's so much that goes into it and it makes it, it's, it's easier to get into and, and to sustain. A person that like is thinking about an e-bike but that's never, doesn't really get it, or what do you tell them? Gosh, if you're thinking about buying an electric bike, I, there are a lot of great resources online. You know, my website is electricbikereview.com and I have some like primers, some guides that's like, what is an e-bike? What's the difference between, you know, the different models? Why would you want to spend thousands of dollars versus a thousand dollars? They are expensive. So that's a place to start. There's a lot of videos and stuff online, but the forums that I've set up are also designed to give people direct access to each other. Um, what, about, I what about that just kind of simple, you know, 
Archie Bunker meets meat and potatoes. Yeah, I'll just. So if you're thinking about getting an e-bike, but you, you're on the fence or whatever, I would say go to your local shop because that's the best experience. Like you get in the saddle and you try it. Um, it's just, a, it's it really hard to describe like the feeling and the, the intuitive nature of e-bikes, especially these days. They become a lot, this part of your body almost. You know, I think like, man, people won't blink to drop 1500 bucks on a nice OLED or no, that's more like two grand. Yeah. yeah, maybe you know, they will blink to spend quite a bit of money on their TV, but an e-bike, you know, even an entry one, they're really not, to me, they're really not that expensive. Yeah, I feel like there's a range of electric bikes, and one thing I've done on electricbikereview.com is I have a category called affordable, so it's things that are priced below $1,500, but remember, like, the first e-bike I got was kind of buyer's remorse that I wish I had spent more because I ended up using it so much and and I realized there's there's so many great options that already have the racks already have the lights that I ended up spending more on after that initial purchase so you know if you can't afford that great like there are pedal powered bikes and there are more bike share programs and things like that but for me it's been totally worth it and and I've actually it's been justifiable to spend even more money because they're just so useful but I always like to ask people um why do you do what you do? Cool. Uh, well, I like to review bikes because I feel like it helps people. I love connecting and, and doing something that's positive, like bringing us together and closer to nature and in a healthier way to live. So that's my motivation. And I like the people I work with too, you know? <laughs> and, and, and sure beats the heck out of the job where you sit in a cubicle or at a desk and all day long. So, and it sounds like you've done that. Oh, I have, yeah, yeah. I've got like a decade in tech, um, you know, working on websites and programming and stuff. But I actually, I miss components of that. Like I, I like being at the cubicle and having, you know, the conversations and going to the meetings. Now I spend a little bit more time in airports and stuff, but I've actually met people who know the YouTube channel in the airport and they recognize me and we have a great conversation. So I feel like, citizen of the world or something and and i love that it's always it's always fun to say hi to people <laughs> um what's like the most interesting thing that's happening happened while you're out reviewing e-bikes that's a great question um i don't know so many different things happen like that to be the most just something kind of that stands out jumps out you, know, you met mel gibson yeah i mean whatever it was maybe not mel gibson but well we were filming in um baja mexico once Actually, I'll, I'll just, so I was, I got to visit uh, Cabo San Lucas, Mexico once. There's, um, it's called Cabo Adventures. They're a, a company that wanted to do some beach bicycle type of activity because they already had zip lining and kayaking. And so they reached out to me asking, what are the bikes that we should buy? And I was like, let's do a review. So I had a bunch of bikes shipped down from two companies and we rode along the beach and we had a whole bunch, all the team and everything. And we went off road and we went on a beautiful adventure. So that was probably the coolest thing that's happened. I mean, you know, we could just see the animals and have a beautiful day in Mexico on the beach on a bicycle. Like, wow, that was cool. And, and this is my second to last question. Um, earlier you said, well, a lot of people like to buy their stuff online, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then they get it and they're like, oh, crap. But you said, I think you said they can do that, but bring it in here and they can really take care of you. Something like that. Well, you know, there are a lot of options to buy online and you end up with kind of extra trash and, and some screwing around like assembling it. There's just inevitably you got to put the wheel on or something like that. And then dialing it in, making sure the spokes are tight and some of these other steps, it's, it's pretty important. So ideally you have a bike shop nearby that you go and maybe you spend an additional hundred bucks or something like that. That'll help the bike run a little bit better. And then you can forge a relationship and get some accessories, whether it's a lock or helmet or something like that. I still tend to, I've, I almost always buy like at a shop if possible, even if it means driving an hour, because it's just so hard to tell what something's actually like watching a video or, you know, reading about it versus getting in the saddle. And everyone has a different experience. So. I'm with you, man. I like bricks. Yeah. You get to meet the people. Yeah. And later when you need, you know, need something, sometimes they just really come up to bat for it. Like I've known David. I didn't realize he worked here, David. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, but I've known David for like 13 years, a lot of some years. And when I walked in, I was like, yeah, I think my spokes or my red bill. <laughs> and he said, uh-huh, new one. Yeah. I trust him. I know him. 
Yeah. Online? What am I going to do online? Spend hours combing through Q and A. In my like, you know, I have a website, right? And visit it if you want, but you really don't need to if you have a shop nearby and you can just go in and get some help. I think because it's such a high involvement purchase and there are so many angles and so many models, sometimes they special order a bike for you. The goal is to bring those two pieces together to help you understand and interpret the bike and not feel like you're pressured to buy because I, I don't sell bikes. I just like talk about them and stuff. And then you can work with your dealer to find the one that, that they can get that's right for you. But one of the great things about yours too is like you were, I mean, I watched you out here like, Man, like encyclopedic knowledge. Yeah. Like I can go and watch one of your videos and take in a little bit of that encyclopedic knowledge. Yeah. And walk in here to a good shop and not try yeah. to go to a, you know, one that has crappy bikes, you know, blah, blah, blah. Can I come in here and really, you know, like you said, just spend a little bit more to get something that's really right. Yeah, and you're more informed if you do a little bit of research. And I think it's fun. A lot of times it's almost just as fun like learning about something as it is to like buy it and have it. Um, I use e-bikes like frequently. I'm just using them every day when I was commuting with that. But um, I still study them. I still like, I get excited about the space because it's fun. Like, and it's neat. The technology, it's positive too. Like there's never a negative thing going on. And it's, it's like, look what they did now, you know? And that's such a great like space to live in. You know, I hope I can still ride a bike when I'm like 80 or 90 or something. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, well, they got trikes. They got tricycles, so you won't have to worry about balance. And a lot of people, that is the way that they are still empowered to get out and feel independent. They, they're amazing trikes these days. They're really cool out there. Yeah. And anything else? Anything else that I missed that you want to kick in there that you want to say about their uh, electric city bikes or? Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's been a pleasure getting to, to talk with you, Alec, and uh, just spending time at, at these different shops. Electricity Bikes in D.C. has been super friendly, and I was really impressed. This used to be like a car dealership, so it's kind of like an evolution happening here with electric bikes. And there's so much space, and they've got so many bikes to try. It's hard to get that, so you're really fortunate if you live in this city or nearby and you can come into a place like this. And the staff is friendly. Sometimes you know with traditional bike shops i felt a little intimidated you know and you kind of got like a guy who like knows better and th this is a it's a completely different angle and it's very inviting to to men women young people old people and that's that's really wonderful awesome yeah. i think that's it do you guys have any questions i think they're all eaten oh are they <laughs> cool uh, as always i'm gonna try to answer questions in the comments and stuff working on a bunch of other reviews right now should be coming out shortly uh, site migration worked out, and we're still kind of like activating some of the different modules and stuff, but it's just nice to, to have things stable, and uh, as always, I appreciate you guys. Ride safe. Love you. We'll see you next time.